Okay. Today we're gonna talk about. Say hello first. We're gonna talk about pumping milk for the baby for when you're not around. So. Say hello. Well, when Natalie Skyler was born, she was 2.610 kilos, which is considered by Norwegian standards a little bit underweight. And she was a little bit lazy. She didn't really want a nurse in the beginning. So for the first couple of days, we had to go through a whole training program with her. And in the very beginning, I had the milk pumped and saved for her. The first breast pump that we ever used was this brand. It wasn't this particular one here because this one is manual and at the hospital the one that they had was electrical. What we did is I had the milk pumped every two hours and saved in the fridge and she slept most of the time so when she was awake the nurse would come in and help us nurse her and if she didn't take the breast they would give it to her in a little cup give the milk to her in a little cup and um, she was really lazy in the beginning the first few days but um, she learned really quickly at any rate after I came home, after a month or so, I got this as a present. This one, this brand, it's called the Harmony Pump, which worked for about a month and a half. So I pump the milk and um, leave it in the fridge, in a bottle, for her to drink while I was gone. Like if I had to go to the gym or if I had to go out or something. What happened was, oops, I would put it in a plastic bag that's um, also from the same brand. We had containers from the same brand. I don't know how to pronounce it even, but here it is. Here it is? Yeah. We had um, plastic freezing bags, and um, those can keep the milk to a up to three, maybe four months in the freezer. But we never had to go for that long because I was going to the gym at least a good um, three, four times a week in the beginning when I went without her. A lot of the times I would take her to the gym with me as well and um, for the classes with the baby. But when I was going alone, she would drink the milk that had been previously frozen and she never had a problem with it, never ever. In the beginning she would drink with a um, syringe or from a little cup for the first few months because it's not very good if the baby is drinking from, what do you call it, from a, a real bottle in the beginning because then they won't take the breast afterwards. But then this breast pump broke so I decided to try this one, this one, this one is a different brand, which I also, I'm not so sure about the pronunciation, so here it is. I try this one. What happened is that I was pumping milk every day, and um, I always had a lot of milk, so I, at some point I had to pump it, even if I wasn't going anywhere, because my breasts were engorged, so I had to pump it. So I would pump it and save it in the freezer. And then after a while, if it went for past a week or so, I would throw it away. But I kept a log of all the dates and I numbered all the receptacles, like these. I have 30 of those. Also, the same brand that I kept in the freezer. Numbered so that I'd know exactly when it had been pumped and then I could discard it. If you don't want to just throw it away, you can use it on your hair, which falls off a lot in the very beginning. And first, after like three months, it starts to fall off. At any rate, this breast pump 
which was also a manual one. Let me see if I can get the name. Here it is. Also broke. But it was a quite it was quite good. So when I when I bought a new one, I decided to buy the same brand again. So I have two of those pumps. I didn't go for the electrical one for two reasons. They're a bit uncomfortable for me, but a lot of mothers prefer those. So that's just my experience. What happens with the milk is that you can't just like wake up in the morning and pump a liter of milk and then go to work, you know, and um, that's going to be the milk that the baby's going to need for the rest of the day. You have to continuously pump every two or three hours to keep your milk production. Because if you go for too long without pumping or without nursing, then that can cause your milk production to go down. If you smoke, what they say here in Norway, in most of the literature that I have read about it, is that if you smoke up to 10 cigarettes a day, that you can still breastfeed. I don't agree with that, but that's what it says. I don't smoke myself. If you're taking any medication or drinking alcohol, you should pump out the milk in the first few hours after you've taken that, and then you can breastfeed safely. That's also what they say. But of course it's best, it's best if you don't drink any alcohol or don't smoke while you're breastfeeding. And um, they say you're supposed to breastfeed for the six first months. I've been breastfeeding for the past 11 months and the past 11 months have been just fantastic. The baby is growing, she's not as big as the other Norwegian kids because first of all she's half Brazilian and because she was born under the weight that's considered average here in Norway, a little bit under Norway. But um, I'd say everybody should breastfeed. If they can, they should. And if they work, they should arrange to buy these receptacles here or the freezing bags and they keep, can keep pumping and even if they're at work, they can take the pump to work and pump, pump the milk, keep it in a sterile receptacle in the fr freezer at work and then take them home in a beer cooler or whatever you call those. But I think everybody should give it a try. <laughs>